This is Laborts, and it is so nice to have you here. These are the things you need. Guys, if you are looking for a nice organizer for the game, look no further. Fancy but functional makes these awesome inserts for Massive Darkness 2. This game has a lot of cards and tokens and you can save yourself some prep time setting up the game with these little MDF trays and magnetized card holders. And yes, all the cards fit in these even with sleeves. Every little token has its own little space, so you will have more time for gaming and it's much more convenient and organized than keeping them in plastic bags. The plastic trays that the game comes with are not very durable and using them is basically a hassle. They have separate boxes for the heroes and mobs and for the roaming monsters of the game and you only need some glue to assemble them next to the easy to follow instructions they provide you with. You can have all these inserts in different colors and with or without a padding. The padding is actually quite soft, so your minis will be protected and most importantly the paint will stay on them. You can also save some shelf space using these organizers, which is huge. They make tons of awesome organizers for board games, so check out their website or look them up on Etsy. You can find both links in the video description. First. We apply grey brown. Use it like you would do a zenithal highlight. Angle your brush in a way that you won't cover the shadows of the folds, so we can have those nice and black. Same goes for the wing, but don't worry about covering the recesses between the feathers. We don't need those dark shadows there. If you don't have an airbrush, check out my Archangel Michael tutorial, where I painted the cloth part of the miniature using only a brush. Obviously, with an airbrush this will be much faster. Now we mix some grimy grey to the grey brown and spray over the top half of the wings. It is very important that we do not cover all the previous layers, so that way we can build up some contrast. Every paint is different, but these lighter creamy tones usually can clog your airbrush pretty well, so you can add a bit more thinner to avoid that. Applying two to three layers with the airbrush, it doesn't take as much time as fixing a clog. So be patient, or I will slap on your tiny hand. If you dilute your paint more, just reduce the pressure of your compressor, so you won't get any webbing. Then with pure grimy grey, we reduce the highlight areas even more, creating a nice off-white finish for the robes and wings. As I highlight smaller and smaller areas with the airbrush, I reduce the pressure and dilute the paint a bit more, so it won't have a spotty but a smooth and silky finish, just like Granny's butt cheek. After that I started working on the halo. Papa Laborts applied some masking putty to avoid overspraying the wings with red. If you want to see how to paint the exact same halo with a brush, just check out my Archangel Uriel video. So many angels. The first layer is word bearers red and I try to move the airbrush to the edge of the halo, so we can have a black center. For the edges of the halo. I applied some Evil Sun Scarlet so we can really push the vibrance of the redness. After the airbrushing was done, I wasn't really happy about the halo's black part, so I glazed some black moving the brush from the red part to the center. Blending this took some time, and you need to watch out that you blend it in a way that the black part creates a circular gradient. It requires some patience, like when you are waiting for Granny to go down the stairs. Now it's time for the skin, and it's not too late to take a photo of your mini for highlight references. As you can tell from the halo, I'm painting the corrupted version of Rafael, so the skin tone will communicate that something is not right with this guy. And I think that faint purple is a good foundation for that. I 
I increase the normal skin tone with adding more KDM flesh tone for the highlights. I'm sketching with a base layer consistency and then glaze over the layers to blend them in. To make him more pale, I add a mix of Emperor Children and White so that will increase the contrast on the skin and I focus those small highlights toward the forehead, cheeks, nose, chin and the top part of the mouth. Then only using the mix of Emperor's Children and White I add these bright highlights. The skin looks sickly and disturbing, just like granny skin. As you see my highlight areas are nicely separated and high in contrast. This makes the skin look older. The less separation you have the smoother and younger the skin will look. Lastly, I add some redness to the skin with a really diluted Mephiston red. I only apply it to the mid-tones of the skin and shadows. Don't cover the highlights because it will create a sunburn and your tiny hand will have the same color because I will slap on it. I use sunny skin tone for the eyes. I wanted to do red, but the eyebrows blocked the light for the eyes, it was barely visible, so I went with sunny skin tone. For the hair, I covered all the locks with Tondia Brown with a base layer consistency. After that, I mixed some Zamesic Desert to the brown and sketched the highlight areas. With the hair, you don't need to pick out the hair locks one by one creating deep shadows between the recesses. With the first highlight color, just cover the recesses too, because it will create a more natural look. Where you want to end the highlight, you can paint some locks, because those parts will help creating a more realistic feel to the hair. Now with pure Zamesi Desert, we do pick up some locks to enhance the texture of the hair, use thin layers, but do not dilute your paint to a level where it becomes too runny and you can control the flow of it. Brush control is all about knowing how much moisture your brush has. Okay? No Mickey Mouse, please. To push the contrast a bit more, I use some Ushapti bone and reduce the highlight on the locks even more. The hair looks like this natural pale blonde color, which I was aiming for. For the last highlight, I add some ice yellow to the hair locks really tiny areas and then move to the face pushing those extreme highlights with this color. Very thin glaze-like consistency so it will blend in nicely. Alright, armor coming up. For time to time I'm actually happy that so many minis in the game have wings because you only need to paint one side of the torso like a true Instagram painter. Previously I covered the armor and leather parts with dryer bark and now I sketch out the highlights with Steel Legion Dreb. This one is going to be a bit of desaturated golden MM. Papa Labors really likes it and I hope you are going to like it as well. Use base layer consistency and really try to avoid the recesses between the armor panels. It has a lot of sheets of metal on his arm and I highly doubt that he can actually move his elbow but uh, looks cool and really that is what matters the most. The armor is richly detailed with some tiny faces and a bigger one on the shield. When placing the highlights on those you just follow the same highlight placement you would do on a regular face. Just determine where the light is coming from. That would be easy because I'm sure you took a photo of the mini when you primed it black. So you just have to follow the highlights from the picture and you'll be fine. When we sketch the highlights and our layers are opaque as can be, blend it in with some glazing. The value difference between Steel Legion Dreb and Dryer Bark is a bit steep, so you should take your time and be patient. Or I will slap on your tiny hand. Vita Larnsen we gradually reduce the highlight areas using thin layers. 
Same process like before, base layer consistency, and then using glazes to blend it in. It is very important that you always do the same motion with your brush while glazing. Another crucial component to glazing is to have the right consistency and brush control. Always wipe off your brush on a paper towel to remove any excess water or paint from the bristles. Let's add some ice yellow to the talar scent and push the contrast more on the metal parts. NMM is all about high contrast and smooth transitions between colors. You can go rough like when you push Granny's wheelchair on a rocky path with less blending, but the posture of this angel guy is so ascendant and solid that rough textures wouldn't really harmonize with that. It could be an interesting contrast between the posture and the finish of the armor, but I prefer the smoother NMM on this guy. You see? As I go brighter with the colors, the thinner consistency I'm using. There are two reasons for that. For one, the previous layers are lighter too, so it's easy to make something opaque, even with a few thin layers. And two, it will be easier to blend it in when we are glazing. Lastly, I use pure ice yellow. Thin layers and tiny tiny areas. By the way guys, thank you for sending me pictures of your minis and tagging me on Instagram. Please keep doing that, because Papa Labwards would like to see your work. After that I add some red hue to the shadow midtone with a very diluted Blood Angels red. This will increase the depth of our NMM and make it a lot more interesting for our eyes. Following the previous thought, we also do that for the highlights with E and yellow. But do not paint this color over the brightest highlights, only place it next to them. Otherwise your gold armor will become way too yellow and your tiny hand will become way too red and swollen. Now for the leather parts. As I said previously, I covered everything with dried bark, so we are onto the highlights right away. Try to use steepling, creating tiny dots and scratches to make the leather look weathered and old, so this way we break the smoothness of the textures on the mini. I mix some grimy grey to the Tasgore fur and weather down the leather parts even more doing the same stippling motion and with some edge highlights. To mute back those highlights, I give the leather two thin coats of sepia Ink. Inks used to dry to a satin finish, which is great for leather. Let's work a little bit more on the robes. With pale sand, I add some extra highlights on the top part of the folds, mainly focusing around the torso. You need to use thin layers to slowly build up the opacity, otherwise it will be very visible. Which was the work of the airbrush and which was the work of the brush. I glaze some Night Lord's blue into the shadowy tones of the cloth. This will increase the depth of our shadows greatly and also introduce a dark blue hue. 
very diluted and smooth coats, so it will blend in nicely and enhance the shadows. Now with an even more diluted eye and eye yellow, glaze some layers next to the pears and highlights. Not over it, but next to it. If you paint the off-white highlights yellow, then I will slap on your tiny hand. For finishing touches. I went back to work on the halo and did some edge highlights. Just angle your brush so the side of your brush tip can slide on those edges and use the base layer consistency. After that, I put some highlights on the halo with Wide Rider Red, just to push the contrast a bit. Lastly, I did some extreme highlights with white, but only around the face of the mini to enhance the focal point. With that, Archangel Raphael is done. So thank you for joining me on this little painting adventure. A huge thanks to my patrons who support this kind of videos. With special shout out to Jonathan Rhodes, Sir Robin the Brave, Cold Blooded Dom, Trying to Paint Minis, Jonathan Mausner, Rulezak, Vlad D, and Urtapple 21. If you want to support Papa Laborci's work and have early access to these videos, and also we have new rewards on Patreon like the student of the Laborts. You can have Papa Laborts to coach you as a personal painting trainer. How cool is that? I hope the rest of your day will be as smooth as a granny's butt cheek. <laughs>